When it comes to cloud infrastructure, virtual machine has been the go-to standard for many of its advantages. However, what if you had an alternative to virtual machine that was more lightweight, economical, and more scalable? That's exactly what Docker is. So Docker is a container-based technology that lets users develop distributed applications. Now, how are these two different? How do they complement each other? So this introduces the topic for today's session, that is Docker versus virtual machine. So hello everyone, this is Sahiti on behalf of Eureka, and I'll be walking you through this session on Docker versus Virtual Machine. So thank you all the attendees for joining in today's session. So without wasting any further time, let's look into the topics for today's session. So we'll start today's session by understanding what is a virtual machine and then I'll tell you the benefits of virtual machine. After understanding that, I'll tell you what are Docker containers and then I'll tell you the benefits of Docker containers. After an introduction of virtual machine and Docker containers, I'll tell you the difference between Docker containers and virtual machine and then the uses of them. All right, guys. So is the agenda clear to everyone? Okay, so that's great. So now let's get started with the first topic for today's session. That is what is virtual machine? A virtual machine is an emulation of a computer system. In simple terms, it makes it possible to run what appears to be on many separate computers on hardware that is actually one computer. The operating systems and their applications share hardware resources from a single host server or from a pool of host servers. Each virtual machine requires its own underlying operating system and then the hardware is virtualized. Not only this, but a hypervisor or a virtual machine monitor is a software, firmware or a hardware that creates and runs virtual machines. It sits between the hardware and the virtual machine and is necessary to virtualize the server. Since the advent of affordable virtualization technology, IT departments have embraced virtual machines as the way to lower costs and increase efficiencies. Now, with the note of this, let me tell you the benefits of virtual machines. So, the benefits of virtual machines are mainly all the operating system resources are available to all the applications, they have established management and security tools. And not only this, but they're better known for security controls. Now, who are the popular virtual machine providers? Well, the popular virtual machine providers are VMware, KVM, VirtualBox, Zen, and Hyper-V. So now that you have understood what is a virtual machine, let me tell you what Docker containers are. So as we all know that Docker is the company driving the container movement and the only container platform provided to address every application across the hybrid cloud. With containers, instead of virtualizing the underlying computer like a virtual machine, only the operating system is virtualized. Containers sit on the top of a physical server and each container shares the host operating system kernel and usually the binaries and libraries too. Now, Sharing the operating system resources such as libraries significantly reduces the need to reproduce the operating system code and means that the server can run multiple workloads with a single operating system installation. Containers are thus exceptionally light and they're only megabytes in size and they just take few seconds to start. In contrast with that, virtual machines take minutes to run and are an order of magnitude larger than the equivalent container. All that a container requires is enough of an operating system supporting programs and libraries and a system resource to run a specific program. What this means is that, in practice, you can put two to three as many as applications on a single server with containers that you can with a virtual machine. In addition to this, with containers, you can create a portable, consistent operating environment for development, testing, and deployment. So now that I've told you about containers, let me tell you the types of containers. So mainly there are two different types of containers. That is the Linux container and the Docker containers. So the Linux container is a Linux operating system level virtualization method for running multiple isolated Linux systems on a single host. Whereas Docker started as a project to build single application Linux containers introducing several changes to the Linux containers that make containers more portable and flexible to use. At a high level, we can say that Docker is a Linux utility that can efficiently create, ship, and run containers. 
So now that I've told you the different types of containers, let me tell you the benefits of containers. So containers offer reduced IT management resources. They reduce the size of the snapshots. They're used in quicker spinning of apps, and they also make sure that the security updates are reduced and simplified. And they also make sure that there's less code to transfer, migrate, and upload workloads. Now, who are the popular container providers? Well, the popular container providers are the Linux containers, the Docker, and Windows Server. So now that I've told you individually what a container is, what a virtual machine is, and how do these two work? Now, let me show you the major differences between Docker containers and virtual machines. Well, the major differences come with operating support, security, portability, and performance. So let's discuss each one of these terms one by one, and let's know the differences between both of them. So let's start with the operating system support. The basic architecture of Docker containers and virtual machines differ in their operating system supports. Containers are hosted in a single physical server with the host operating system, which is shared among them. But the virtual machines, on the other hand, have a host operating system and an individual guest operating system inside each virtual machine. Irrespective of the host operating system, the guest operating system can be anything like it can be Linux, Windows, or any other operating system. Now, the Docker containers are suited for situations where you want to run multiple applications over a single operating system kernel. But if you have applications or servers that need to run on different operating system flavors, then virtual machines are required. Sharing the host operating system between the containers makes them very light and helps them to boot up in just a few seconds. Hence, the overhead to manage the container system is very low compared to that of virtual machines. Now, let's move on to the second difference, that is security. In Docker, since the host kernel is shared among the containers, the container technology has access to the kernel subsystems as a result of which a single vulnerable application can hack the entire host server providing root access to the applications and running them with the super user privileges is therefore not recommended in docker containers because of these security issues on the other hand virtual machines are unique instances with their own kernel and security features they can therefore run applications that need more privilege and security now Moving on to the third difference, that is portability. Docker containers are self-contained packages that can run the required application. Since they do not have a separate guest operating system, they can be easily ported across different platforms. The containers can be started and stopped in a matter of few seconds compared to that of VMs due to their lightweight architecture. This makes it easy to deploy Docker containers quickly in servers. On the other hand, Virtual machines are isolated server instances with their own operating system. They cannot be ported across multiple platforms without incurring compatibility issues. For development purposes, where the applications have to be developed and tested in different platforms, Docker containers are the ideal choice. Now, let's move on to the final difference, that is performance. Docker and virtual machines are intended for different purposes. So, it's not fair to measure their performance equally, but the lightweight architecture makes Docker containers less resource intensive than the virtual machines. As a result of which, containers can start up very fast compared to that of virtual machines, and also the resource usage varies among the two. In containers, the resource usage such as CPU, memory, input, output varies with the load or traffic in it. Unlike the case of virtual machines, there is no need to allocate resources permanently to containers. Scaling up and duplicating the containers is also an easy task compared to that of virtual machines as there is no need to install an operating system in them. So now that I've told you the differences between Docker containers and virtual machines, let me show you a real life case study of how Docker containers and virtual machines can complement each other. So all of us know PayPal, right? So PayPal provides online payment solutions through their account balances, bank accounts, credit cards, or promotional financing without sharing the financial information. Today, PayPal is leveraging OpenStack for their private clouds and runs more than 1 lakh virtual machines. Now, 
One of the biggest desire of PayPal's business was to modernize their data center infrastructures, making it more on demand, improving its security, meeting compliance regulations, and also making everything cost efficient. So they wanted to refactor their existing Java and C++ legacy applications by dockerizing them and deploying them as containers. This called for a technology that provides a distributed application deployment architecture and can manage workloads, but must also be deployed in both private and public cloud environments. So PayPal uses Docker commercial solutions to enable them to not only provide gains for the developers in terms of productivity and agility, but also for the infrastructure teams in the form of cost efficiency and enterprise grade security. The tools being used in production today include Docker commercially supported engines, Docker trusted registry, and as well as Docker Compose. The company believes that containers and virtual machines can coexist and thus they combine these two technologies. Leveraging Docker containers and virtual machines together gave PayPal the ability to run more applications while reducing the number of total virtual machines and also optimizing their infrastructure. This also allowed PayPal to spin up new applications much more quickly and also on as needed basis. Since containers are more lightweight and instantiate in a fraction of second, while virtual machines take minutes, they can roll out a new application instance quickly, patch up an existing application, or even add the capacity to compensate for peak times within the year. So this helped PayPal to drive innovation and also outpace the competitions. So guys, that's how the company gained the ability to scale quickly and deploy faster with the help of Docker containers and virtual machines. So now let me summarize the complete session in a minute for you. So Docker is a containerization app that isolates applications at a software level. If a virtual machine is a house, then the Docker container is a hotel room. If you do not like the setup, then you can always change the hotel room as it is much easier than changing a house, isn't it? So similarly, as a hotel has multiple rooms sharing the same underlying infrastructure, Docker offers the ability to run multiple applications with the same host operating system and sharing underlying resources. Now, it is often observed that some of them believe that Docker is better than a virtual machine. But we need to understand that while having a lot of functionality and being more efficient in running applications, Docker cannot replace virtual machines. Both containers and virtual machines have their own benefits and drawbacks and the ultimate decision will depend on your specific needs. But let me also tell you that there's some general rules of thumb. That is, Virtual machines are a better choice for running applications that require all of the operating system resources and functionalities where you need to run multiple applications on servers or have a wide variety of operating systems to manage. Whereas the containers are a better choice when your biggest priority is to maximize the number of applications running on a minimal number of servers. But in many situations, the ideal setup is to likely include both. With the current state of virtualization technology, the flexibility of virtual machines and the minimal resource requirements of containers work together to provide environments with the maximum functionality. So guys, that's all for today's session. I hope you found this session informative. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!